hello guys welcome to the series of video tutorials on the course foundations of mathematics this is part 2 of chapter 1 statements and logic and the title of this video is statements using quantifiers in this video i will introduce the existential quantifier and the universal quantifier and we are going to negate the statements using these two quantifiers. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify statements having existential quantifier, identify statements having universal quantifier, write statements using both these quantifiers, and you will be able to apply the knowledge of these two quantifiers in real life situations. Okay, so let's begin with uh, statements with quantifiers. You look at the following phases. You must have heard these uh, phases for all, for every, given any, each of. So all these four convey the same meaning. And the, these two in green, uh, there is and for some, these two convey the same meaning. Okay. So these two are saying that something is happening for at least one. Whereas the top four are saying something is happening for all of something. Now uh, let's take uh, two statements. Uh, look at the first statement S1. S1 reads, there is a rotten apple in the basket of apples. When will I say that the statement S1 is true? You imagine you are sitting with a basket of apples, okay, and you want to check whether the statement S1 is true or not, okay. So what you will do, you will start picking up the uh, apples in the basket one by one. I will pick up the first apple, I will check whether it is rotten or not. Supposing the first one is not rotten, you pick up the second one. Suppose second one is also not rotten, you pick up the third one. Supposing the third one is rotten. Now we have found at least one apple in the basket of apples which is rotten. If you are able to find at least one apple in the basket which is rotten, then the statement S1 is said to be a true statement. Okay. So there is a rotten apple in the basket of apples means there should be at least one rotten apple in the basket of apples. Then will I say then I will say that the statement S1 holds true. Is it clear? Now look at the second one. The statement S2 reads all apples in the basket are ripe. Now supposing you have a basket of apples. So, to say that the statement S2 is true, what you will have to do? You will have to pick up each and every element in the basket and you will have to show that it is right. So, the statement S2 will be a true statement. The statement S2 will be a true statement only when all the apples in the basket are right. Okay. So, the statement S1 asserts that the apple is rotten holds for at least one apple in the basket. Whereas the statement S2 asserts that the statement the apple is ripe holds for each and every element in that basket. Okay. Now, uh, these are notations which you all must have seen. So, there exists a notation as this and for every we use this notation. Okay. Now, when I am looking at a statement, there are two fundamental uh, aspects of a statement with quantify. Okay. The first one is the quantifiers refer to the elements of the set X which depends on the context. Now, whenever you are talking about a statement with quantifier, it involves a set which is called the set of contexts. Okay. So, this set is called the set of contexts to the given quantifier. The second uh, fundamental aspect of a statement with quantifiers is 
now to the set of context that we have there is a property p which makes sense to sum or to all the elements of the set x that is the set of context so uh, the two, the two fundamental aspects of a statement are the set of context and the property which makes sense to the elements of the set of context now you look at the following examples uh, the first example is there is a rotten apple in the basket okay so what is the set of context here i'm uh, there is a set which is a collection of all the apples in the basket so that is the set of context so the set of context here is apples in the basket and what is the property that is uh, being talked about about the elements from the set of context it's being rotten so the property p which i am talking about is being rotten okay and uh, we are saying that uh, at least one apple in the basket is having the property of being rotten so th this is the set of contexts in the property if you look at the second example all the tables in the room are dirty now what is the set of contexts here i am talking about the tables in the room so that is my set of context the collection of all the tables in the room is my set of context and what is the property i am saying that all the tables in the room are dirty so being dirty is the property here okay so this is the set of context and this is the property now in general uh, existential quantifier uh, now in general the existential quantifier in a statement will look like this when i say existential quantifier i mean there exists some element in the set of contexts which has some property okay so in general the existential quantifier uh, a statement uh, will look like this there exists an element of the set x for which the property p holds okay where is the universal quantifier when i say universal quantifier i mean some property is true for all the elements of the set of context okay so universal quantifier statement in general looks like for each element in the set x which is a set of context the property p holds so property p holds for each and every element in the set x now if i use the notations there exists and for every the above two statements in general can be written as there exist if you look at the first one there exist one element at least one element of the set x so there exists a point a element x in capital x for which x will have the property p such that x has the property p whereas the second one is written as for each element in the set x so for every element in the set x so for each x in x the element small x is going to have property p okay now for example there exists an integer x such that x square is less than or equal to 2 this is a statement involving the existential quantifier okay so it says there exists at least one integer x whose square is less than or equal to 2 so how will you write this using quantify so i will say there is if i uh, take my set of integers as x some notation capital x then i can say there exists small x in capital x capital x is the set of integers such that it satisfies the property x square is less than or equal to 2 now look at the second example given any integer x its square is greater than or equal to 0 x square is greater than or equal to 0 okay so this is an example of a statement with universal quantifier so for every integer x its square is greater than or equal to 0 so for all x in x x square is greater than or equal to 0 now uh, if i have a statement 
uh, which involves quantifiers, uh, both of them, either the universal or the existential, how do I negate such statements? Okay. Uh, let's consider one example. Let's say I have an example uh, of a statement S1, which reads, all apples in the basket are ripe. Now, when will I say that this statement is a false statement? S1 says all apples in the basket are ripe. To say that this is false, I will have to find one apple in the basket which is not ripe. If I am able to do so, then I can say that the statement S1 is false. Okay. So, the negation of this will be not S1. There is an apple in the basket which is not ripe. So, using uh, if I say the set of X is the set of apples in the basket and P is the property of being ripe, then using quantifiers, S1 can be written as for all X in X, X is ripe. That means for every apple in the basket, the apple is ripe and its negation will be not S1 using quantifiers. There exists at least one element X in X such that X does not have the property P. Okay, so at least one apple I'll be able to find in the basket which is not ripe. So it does not have property P. Okay, so in general now if I have a statement involving the universal quantifier, for every element in X, the property P holds. Okay, so when will I say that this is false? Its negation would be what? There is an element in the set X such that the property P does not hold for that element small x. Okay, so using quantifiers, how can I write the statement S1? For all X in X, X has property P and its negation would be not S1. So when I say that this is false, I will be able to find one element in the set X which does not have property P. Okay, so in this way, you uh, you can negate a, a statement involving a universal quantifier. Now, if you look at the statement S2, this says there is a rotten apple in the basket. So, this is an example of a statement with existential quantifier. Okay, when will I say that this is not true? When all the apples in the basket are not rotten. So, given any apple in the basket, it is not rotten. This will be the negation of S2. Okay. Now, if the set X is the set of apples and in the basket and P is the property of being rotten, then using quantifiers, S2 can be written as there exists a point X in X that is an apple such that X is the property P and its negation would be given any apple in the basket that means all the apples in the basket does not have property p fine so in general now if i have a statement with existential quantifier there is an element in x which has the property p its negation would be given any element in the set x the element does not have the property p and using quantifiers the statement S2 can be written as there exists X in X where X is a set of quantifiers such that X has property P and its negation using quantifiers would be for each X in X, X does not have property P. Okay. So, in this way, you can negate any statement involving a universal quantifier or an existential quantifier. Okay. I hope that's clear. And these are the references that I used. Thank you.